Yeah. All right. Thanks, Paul. So as hopefully many of you know, we've actually done a lot of work um, over the past several releases and years and uh, towards keeping the ability of our customers to stay code current. And uh, the major project that we've been working on, the umbrella, as you will, is what we like to call the JD Edwards Update Manager. So we've got many different players when it comes to making sure your JD Edwards system stays up to date. We've got a business analyst who will go through and actually see the new features like you are today at conferences and uh, over webinars and reading about it on Learn JDE. We've got business analysts that will be then taking over and trying to evaluate the changes that will be uh, could be made to your system and what kind of impact that'll have. We've got the ERP manager, which typically approves the project itself or mo moves towards the board and make sure you have the right approvals and everything. And then once all that's done, we hand it over to our system admins to actually implement the patching. So what we want to focus on here today is we want to show you kind of the middle piece where the business analyst would do the impact analysis of what a patch would actually do to their system. So I've got my buddy here, Dave uh, Belfus here, and we're going to walk you through some of the upcoming release 24 impact analysis tools that we've come up with and show you what, um, what would happen to an actual system if we were to take this latest complete application update and apply it to a system. So Dave, walk us through impact analysis. All right, thanks Clayton. All right, so unlike AJ, I'm just gonna wear one hat today. I'm gonna assume the role of the business analyst. I'm gonna jump into the impact analysis summary view. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and select the uh, apps update, uh, the latest app, apps update, which we're, so we can identify or we can take start taking a look and see what it's gonna take in order to uh, take this update. First thing I notice on the, Left on the left side here on the grid is that there's over 11,000 objects in the in the update. Now that's pretty scary, and oftentimes that could be all it takes is to put a halt to this project immediately. That's just too much. I'm not going to get approval for this. I'm not. I'm, I can't proceed. But let me take a little closer look and see if it's it really is that bad. If I go in the upper right here, I can see that this blue section is actually telling me that over 98% of these objects are already code current. So I don't have to worry about any of those objects. Those are already there. Nothing's going to change those. So my my impact is is very minimal. In fact, so in fact, I got less than two percent, or about 180 objects or so that I have to worry about. So looking a little closer at those 180, 180 objects, uh, I can see that over 94 percent of those are not customized. So there's nothing I need to do in order to retrofit or anything like that uh, it, to make this to make this package work. I only got about uh, about 10 objects that, that are going to be customized that I'm going to need to work with my development organization to get to get those changes made. So let's dive a little deeper. This is the story starting to look pretty good. It doesn't look like it's going to be that bad. So let's take another let's take a little closer look at what those objects are. I need to go through all 20, 11,000 of them. Let me minimize this. I can see here, so this is what I can use now with, uh, these are the 180 objects or so that are gonna be replaced. I can start working with my fellow business analysts and start breaking these down by product code or however you've got your business analyst defined. But before I do that, there's more information that I can I can find out here um, and make that whole activity a lot easier. We mentioned earlier that there were some customizations. So if I filter on customize, take a look at that. I can get a feel for how many objects are actually customized, or rather what objects are customized. In this case, I've got nine objects that are customized. So this is what I would take to my ERP manager and work with them to uh, see about getting what, you know, making those get retrofit if we decide to proceed with this. Yeah, so Dave, I've noticed you, we've got some really cool icons there in the middle that show object used. Uh, how, can you explain to everybody how we're trying to leverage uh, the patch information along with object usage tracking and being able to show them how, you know, which which objects are actually being utilized in their system. Sure, yeah, objects tracking was a, was a feature we delivered several, several years back. And what it does is it captures any time an application UBE or business function is run. And it, as you mentioned, it was designed so or originally to allow us to apply that to the impact analysis to help the business analyst and the testers really focus in and zero in where uh, what, what objects are actually being used and which objects that they should focus on when they're doing their validations. As you can see in this case of the nine objects, in fact, only one is actually being used right now. So Paul, jump in. Yep. Yep. All right. And then another thing that we've done with uh, 
talking to customers in our SIG group is, uh, you know, one thing we've learned is that they actually have been tracking objects that they've copied an old extensibility option and recommendation that we used to have back in the day. And they've been tracking this manually. Uh, show these guys how we can actually help them keep track of this now and, and do some evaluation of how the patch is going um, to impact those copied objects. Yes, you're correct. Back uh, two years back in release 22, we delivered a feature uh, via the well, via, via the OMW, which captures uh, any time an object is being copied, uh, so that you can know what the children are. This is uh, this is this is uh, something that is often overlooked, as you mentioned. So I can go in here and take a little take a little closer look. This is the object that's going to be re replaced, and this is an object. This is the child object that was copied from that. So uh, this is another example I would bring back to my ERP manager. Say I need you to take a look at this and see if any any retrofit needs to be done here as well. Awesome, cool. Um, another thing that's popped up is is part of our many years of doing updates and upgrades with a couple of escalated customers is the ability to look at what tables are going to be impacted, what indexes are going to be impacted by doing an update. I know this is really important to customers when it comes to if they have auditing that they have to answer to as well. So can you show them how we? How we uh, should highlight those features that will, or those objects that will be changed. Yeah, when we run impact analysis, we'll take a look at all of the tables that are in the package as well as the indexes and identify any differences between what we're delivering or what's being delivered and what's currently in our system. And we'll we'll call all those out and you can go in here and take a look at these. For example, index changes are often added or changed uh, to, for performance reasons or to support a customization. So this is where you can get that type of information, again, as you're building your your, your uh, your solution. This is this is where you can get information for, again for retrofitting or whether or not you want to add those indexes back and so on. Yeah, that's great. All right. So Clayton, there was actually one more thing that you were been talking to me about. You, this is a common uh, request that you hear a lot from our SIG groups related to special instructions. So I wanted to highlight one more thing for you. Uh, under special instructions, we've got the ability now. We brought all this in house. We brought all this into the system, I should say where you can see all of the manual instructions that need to be applied for the particular update, uh, any user-defined codes or glossary changes that need to be made. It's all in the system. You can track it here. You can decide whether or not you want to take it, and you'll no longer have to deal with this via spreadsheets and so on. Yeah, I mean, this was over 200 pages worth of work before that, that partners and customers would have to plow through. So now you have the ability to go through and predefine or and keep track of those special those manual special instructions that we that we provide as part of all of our patches and to actually have some automation options. So Dave kind of walked them through that. Yep. So you can see you can share you can choose you can uh, say if you want to skip it I, or if I want to accept it or I want it to be applied. So when this patch or the issue is applied, it'll honor those 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 decisions that you made and update your system accordingly. It's awesome. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, so as you can see, we've been doing a lot with um, with the JD Edwards Update Manager after the B business analyst has gone through and applied and evaluated those changes and decided that this patch is actually something they want to do. We've got other new features that we're going to be talking a lot about this week as far as being able to apply those updates in a much more streamlined and automated way through the web client, as well as um, a couple of different uh, impact analysis. We'll, we'll go through impact analysis in one of our other sessions and be able to batch apply these updates uh, through the web as well. So we've done a lot of great work and we're really excited about it. Thanks, Paul. All right.